This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow & Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. There's this common idea, I believe, in the Webflow community where there's this belief that why would you write code when you've got no code tools? Coding is dead. What's the point in learning development? Now, it's no secret that I still very much love code and I use it every single day within my company. We build apps for some of the biggest companies in the world and so my heart still very much sits as a developer. I just want to give you a quick taster on what it's like to start up a coding project in 2024 because with current tools, CLIs and libraries and things like this, it's literally quicker for me to start up a coding project than it is a Webflow project. Let's dive into it and give you a taster of what it's like to start a Next.js project from scratch. So providing you've got Node.js installed, I've got VS Code opened. I'll leave links to download those things. We can do everything we need right from this interface here. So I'm going to open up my terminal inside of VS Code. And all I'm going to write is bun x, or you can use npnx or whatever package manager you choose. npn is probably the one you want, npnx. Uh, ne create next app latest. Hit enter, and I'm just going to let it do its thing. So what's the name of my app? Let's do, yeah, my app is fine, whatever. Do I want to use TypeScript? If you're learning, then you're probably not going to want to use TypeScript. TypeScript is recommended, but I'm going to choose no. Um, ESLint is good, so yes is fine. Tailwind, love Tailwind. Uh, source directory, no. App router, yes, this is a new thing, new thing. I'm just going to do all the defaults, and then it's going to go off, and depending on your internet speed, it's going to install all those things, but it's not going to install much, and we'll be over in a few minutes. While that's installing, I will just let you know what Next.js is. Now, React itself isn't really recommended to be used on its own. Unless you really know what you're doing, React is just a component framework for JavaScript. Next.js runs a server for your React project. And it's more SEO friendly because it's pre-rendering the website. It's just a better overall solution for most use cases uh, that requires React. So that's installed. Bob's your uncle, we're good to go. So it's at this point I just wanna say, why would we code an app? Or why would one want to actually code a website? And it really comes down to scalability. It won't come as a surprise to you that there are limits on what Webflow can do. It's not long before you're reaching for external libraries, ways to do this, ways to do that. It feels very hacky. When I build a website in code, I know that it is completely limitless with what I can actually do. Where there's a will, there's a way. Whether it's integrating with third-party services, whether it's things changing, I know whatever we throw at a Next.js app, we will be able to figure it out somehow. Whereas when I start to recommend no code tools, I know that there's going to be a limit somewhere. They're providing a shortcut user interface for us to develop a website. Webflow, for instance, is really only geared towards marketing websites. And yes, you can extend that with things like Wiz, and that's in part why Webflow is so powerful, but the limit is there. And so I'm reluctant to always just by default suggest Webflow. Certainly, if I know I need to hack my way around it, I'm never that confident in, in hacks and things. Whereas I know the true correct way to do things, I have access to the back end, I have access to the front end, I can do whatever it is I want. I can host it wherever I want. It's a hell of a lot cheaper as well. And granted, you don't get CMS items, you know, that's not built in, I would need to build that in. But it's just having all of these jigsaw pieces ready for me to use and combine in any way that I want and know that I'm not hacking the experience. I'm not trying to work around some of the limitations of something like Webflow. We CD into my app and we run bun run or npm run dev. Localhost 3000. And you can see that we have a website up and running and it's using Tailwind, which is fantastic. And we're good to go. We jump into next here, we go to our page, and this is all the HTML markup that we are currently seeing on the screen. And if I just delete all this and go, hello, web flowers, save that, not back into here, you've got it all there. If I wanna create components 
uh, in this, then all I've got to do, and I've got some helpers here, is I would recommend creating a um, folder in here. I like to go underscore components and then go uh, header.js. And I've got a nice little function here that when I put NFC, it's going to create a next functional component. Uh, I'll leave a link to that if you want to install that as a template. Uh, what would we call it? Heading, wasn't it, or something? And inside of here, I'm going to put a link, and uh, Next has its own version of a link. And you can see through VS Code, it knows what I want to do. It's detected a link and will automatically import things. And I'm just going to put a href there and put in everything you would expect. And you can open it up and go go home. Or you can do self-closing if you haven't got anything in it. Let's say, for example, you've got a div and you don't want to close it. You want anything in it and you want to do class name. You put it, give it a width of A, height of A, and a background of, I don't know. So we've created ourselves a little square there. And we don't need any content in it, so we can self-close it. And if we go into page here, we can import header. VS Code has picked it up automatically imported it, self-closing because we've got no content in there. And if we go back to our thing, we've got our go home link, and I have no idea where that div is. Ah. Perfect. There we go. Just needed to redo it. I was expecting it to be a empty folder. I like to put an underscore there so it pushes it up to the top, uh, but that's your personal preference. So there we go. We can open this up here, just like any other element. Uh, put some whatever. This could be actual HTML or something like this. Hello, hello. And inside of header, we want to allow for the, this is something built, built into Next.js if we do children there. And then in here, I can actually render out whatever those children are. So once again, there's that hello I put in there. Similarly, we can pass in props. So we could do uh, size equals XL. And inside of here, we're expecting a size variable. And we can go class name. We open this up, make it make it into a, uh, what do they even call this? Like a interoperable spring, string or something like that. We can go if size equals Excel, then we want to go text Excel. Otherwise, don't do anything. And if we take a look there, you can see all the text is bigger already. You can see text Excel there. If I don't pass anything, then the class disappears. As you can see, it wasn't very painful. It was very quick and relatively easy. Now, again, you don't get CMS and you don't get hosting, but things like Vercel make the hosting aspect super easy. And the CMS does get a bit more complicated. But if you don't need a CMS, and maybe in a lot of cases you really don't need a CMS, it makes things a lot easier, then consider learning a bit of code because it could be quite fun. I certainly think it's hella fun to code. Let me know if you want to hear more about Next.js and coding stuff because I know this is a no code thing, but again, I'm all about broadening my horizons. So I hope that you can join me along the ride. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, cheers for tuning in. I hope you've learned something. Let me know in the comments whether you'd give Next.js a go. And until next time, happy no coding.